Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to make the inputs and outputs to your Python functions extremely flexible. Uh, let's look at a typical function. A typical function is like a black box. Here you have your code inside and this function requires one or multiple inputs and typically produces one output. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to make extremely flexible inputs and have your function produce multiple outputs. So with one function call, you get a whole load of possible outputs. Now, how do we go about this or why? Uh, well, let's look at a typical function. This is a typical function and it has one input, second input and so on. Here is the code which doesn't concern us right now and then you'd have your output. And then here that is my normal Python code and this is the code calling the function each time. Now my problem is that let's say I modify this function and instead of having three parameters I need a fourth and a fifth one. No problem, I can modify my function, but then the problem is that I'd have to modify all my function calls because now three parameters is not enough. I need five parameters, unless those two additional parameters are optional. Yeah. So, so this is my problem, and I don't want to change you know, my code. I just like to modify my function, and that's it. Now, how do I go about this? Well, one way in Python is to render your inputs and outputs to lists or tuples. So instead of having multiple outputs, you'd have now just one input. However, this input is either a list or a tuple. And the same thing can be applied for the output. So instead of having just one output, you would have a list or a tuple as output. And this list, obviously, or tuple contains multiple items. And then in your calling code, you can just call the output with a certain index. And then you just get that specific output that you're interested in. Oh, I forgot that closing bracket here. OK, now. Um, the problem I have with lists or tuples is that I'd have to remember the sequence of each item. So if I'm using, if I need CCC somewhere in my code, I'd have to know that that is at index position two. And if that sequence is changed for any reason, my code would break. So that's why I'm not a big fan of using lists or tuples in such scenarios, but I would rather use a dictionary. And a dictionary, first of all, the sequence doesn't matter because the key matters. And it doesn't matter where that element, where that pair key, key value pair is. Main thing, the key doesn't change. And my code would not break if I change the sequence or if I add additional keys. If my code is not aware of those additional keys, it doesn't, doesn't care. And if I modify my function, well, then I have my additional keys and it'll, they'll take them in there. Now, obviously, my function calls, my function calls would not have to be modified, but my inputs would have to be modified. But I think that's a better thing or easier thing to do than, than changing my actual code and changing my actual function calls. Now, let me show you an example of how that works. Here, here I have a function called calculate age, which basically calculates the age of somebody, and all it needs is the birth date. Now, it just takes one input. And uh, the input, if you see here, that's the function call. That's, first of all, that's the function call here. And the input, my birth date, is a dictionary containing three things, month, day and year 
And I can, in, in, in future, I can add further keys, for instance, hour, minute, and so on. So I have just have one input, albeit a dictionary. And then lots of stuff happens here. And then here you could see my output. I have created a dictionary. And then the beautiful thing about the, the dictionary, I'd have then different keys and different values, and I can get all the intermediate things. For instance, I mean, actually, that's the output I'm interested in. But you know what? I might be interested, and that's, that's always a, a nice debugging feature. I, I, I would be interested in knowing those in-between values sometimes, just to see if, there's, if these are also calculated correctly, or if there's an error. Or if you're looking for an error, you, with this kind of output, you can exactly see all the uh, uh, in-between steps that functions undergoing to produce the ultimate uh, uh, point of the whole function. And here I, I even uh, repeat the input, basically the birthday, day, month, and year, and as well as that the current day, current month, current year, and then obviously the, the, the ultimate goal, which is basically output age. And uh, if I just, I can now, if I, if I need to know my output uh, or my age, I just go and create a dictionary, have my inputs, and then my age, uh, then I would just call the function with, with that input and then just print the output age. And if we try that thing out, let's, let me save that and run it. Uh, oh, okay, so yeah, there you go. Let me just fix that window. So here I'd have like 32, that's, that's the age that, that I'm interested in. And obviously if I take that, that, that key away and just print my age, now I'm printing the whole dictionary, the whole output. Let me save that and run it again. And now you see that's the whole output. So I can see everything what that function is. Let me just make that. I can see everything what that function is producing. It's producing everything in one. See, I can see all details. I can also see uh, what the function is using as a current day. Is that right? You know, and, and the nice thing about it is with one function call, just one function call, I can have all that stuff. So basically, if you look here, I can have like, uh, for instance, here, I'd say output age. Now, and if I need, if I need, uh, I don't know, like the, the, the current day or the current month, I don't have to call the function again. I just take that same parameter and just use uh, that same my age, which is basically the, 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 the previous call, and just, you know, put in a, put in a different key. And uh, save that and let's run that. And now you'd have two things, see? But all I, all I need is, all I needed was to call this function once. And especially for functions which do require some time, I don't know, calling a database or going through certain uh, sort of loads of data, it is uh, helpful if you can call this function once and get all sorts of outputs of that function. And in contrast to lists and tuples, a dictionary is much more flexible because you can always add new keys. I don't have to remember the sequence of it. And uh, uh, hitting a, or, 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 or querying a value by key is much simpler because I think everybody agrees that once you see this, you know exactly what, this, what, 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 what kind of value you're getting out there. Whereas if that was a list, it it will be very hard to memorize. Oh, you know, I need the, I need the output age. That would be uh, item number zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five today. And if further elements arrive, you know, if further elements are added, are added to the output, hmm, who knows? Maybe output age slides down to element seven or nine, you know? So that, that makes things very complex with uh, lists and tuples. Whereas with the dictionary, be it as input or output, is very, very simple. And here you can see if I now add a further key, let's say hour, and uh, you know, put in some random hour. That's my birth hour. Save that and run. The code doesn't care. Okay, the code doesn't care. 
see? So I hope that trick was useful for you. If you got any more suggestions and any other tricks or comments to this trick, just feel free to use the comments below. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.